Tonight, we're taking a close look at the Louisiana judicial system, a system that has disenfranchised the black community for more than 100 years. In 1898, after the Civil War, leaders in Louisiana implemented the practice of non-unanimous jury verdicts. Non-unanimous juries allowed them to dismiss the voices of black jurors. But finally, in 2020, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that non-unanimous juries are unconstitutional. Sounds like good progress, right? Well, the court didn't order new trials for those convicted under the old system. So that means that right now there are about 1,500 people in prison because of convictions arising from non-unanimous jury verdicts. And that includes 49-year-old Brandon Jackson. He spent more than 25 years behind bars, 25 years. He was accused of robbing a local Applebee's restaurant, a crime that he swears he did not commit. The jury convicted him on a vote 10 to two. The 10 who found him guilty, white people. The two who voted to acquit Jackson, black. Joining me now is Claude Michael Como. He's the attorney for Brandon Jackson and a staff attorney at the Promise of Justice Initiative Thanks so much for being with us tonight, Claude. Tell us about the facts of Jackson's case. Yeah, uh, so this case involves an armed robbery uh, of an Applebee's in Bossier Parish. And basically two armed men entered through the back door of a an Applebee's restaurant. Um, and uh, they were masked, so no one was able to identify their face, and they took about $6,000 in cash. Um, at the time when the police were investigating it, uh, they investigated on how and one man, Joseph Young, uh, he had no and then later said that he did have involvement, uh, told many stories to the police, but this was the one that he planned the robbery the night before with include, with uh, other men, including Brandon Jackson, and he had let them in the back door at the time of the robbery, and then, um, and then the robbery occurred. All the evidence of the crime was found in Joseph Young's home, uh, including the two guns and some cash from the restaurant, and no physical evidence was found at all linking Brandon Jackson to this case no physical evidence and they had masks on okay now you say that jackson was charged under the habitual offender law can you explain to us what that means yeah absolutely louisiana habitual offender law basically means that if you've had any previous uh charges uh of felonies then basically anytime you commit another felony you can be your sentence can be enhanced so in brandon jackson's case he had two prior drug charges um, and so whenever he was convicted by this non-unanimous jury of armed robbery, they used those drug charges to enhance his sentence to a life without parole sentence. Uh, later, some law changes uh, came that was able to resentence him to a 40-year sentence, um, but he is still sitting right now in prison on that sentence. Whew. All right, so there was a hearing yesterday. Tell us what happened during that hearing. Right, so... When we got to court, we were having a hearing on his the post-conviction relief application that we filed asking for a new trial. Um, the judge ultimately decided that he was not willing to grant the application um, until the Louisiana Supreme Court came to a conclusion on the issue and basically told him that he would either have to grant or deny. He's He wasn't willing to make that decision himself. He was waiting for the Louisiana Supreme Court to make it. And so uh, instead of denying the application, um, uh, we were we requested that he stay the application and, and keep it pending in his court until that decision came forward um, so that the application wasn't denied uh, prematurely. So tell us how Jackson is feeling right now through all of this and knowing now that he'll have to wait until at least February. Well, he's absolutely disappointed, and, and rightfully so. It's a disappointing result. Um, we we expect our the judges in Louisiana to 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 adjudicate cases and, and answer these questions that whenever we bring legal arguments to them. And unfortunately, uh, he this judge was not willing to do that in this case. Any idea why? 
he seems intent on, on on saying that the Louisiana Supreme Court has to tell him what to do. Uh, he can't answer the question himself. He has to wait for the answer to come from the Louisiana Supreme Court. He says that lots of cases are, are, are probably going up through Louisiana. And as, as you mentioned, there are over thousands uh, people that are in prison right now um, on these cases. And so he feels that he can wait it out. He can just wait for another, uh, the, the higher court to tell him what to do. Um, and so he just kept the case pending in his court. All right, so his mother, Jackson's mother, we know she's 74 years old. She's been at every hearing. How is she holding up? She is an amazing woman. I think that, you know, she has said that she is basically staying alive to see him come home. And and so every court hearing she comes to and, and whenever it gets passed, it's, it's an extremely disappointing result for her. It's extremely frustrating to come to every hearing um, you know, in her health and and find that it's another kick of the can, essentially, and there's no there's no resolution. And then the only solution is to keep coming back and keep waiting. So I, I have to ask you, the court ruled these non unanimous juries unconstitutional, but they also ruled that cases before the decision don't have to be retried. So if it's unconstitutional, why not just fix the prior cases? Right. That's a great question. Um, and we all hoped that the U.S. Supreme Court would take that initiative and answer that question. Unfortunately, the U.S. Supreme Court feels that it can't get involved in in the state's ability to uh, to regulate its own criminal justice system. So they they went as far to say, hey you can't do this anymore like that's not constitutional however we're not going to tell you what to do with the convictions that you've already had you're going to have to handle that yourself and unfortunately that that is a mm. that leaves it in the hands of people that have not been able like parish by parish or have, trying to make decisions based on what they think is the law or what they're willing to do yes it doesn't even sound like they really want to deal with what happened before. But we're out of time. Thank you so much, Claude and Michael Como, attorney for Brandon Jackson and a staff attorney at the Promise of Justice Initiative. Appreciate you joining us here tonight.